In, <clears throat> in this video, I'm going to uh, explain how to find area enclosed by polar curves. I'm going to briefly talk about the concept, but most important is we just need to know the, the formula, uh, the area formula, and we need to apply it. I have done a different video on this same idea, but I did a lot of things by hand. And if you're coming to this video, I'm assuming you're going to be taking the AP exam that does not, which does not require you to do integrals by hand of, um, or most polar integrals by hand. So I want to focus on the calculator techniques. So we should recap a little bit how we in motivated the definite integral. Um, when you're taking a calculus course, one of the big ideas that you need to tackle is like, how do you find area under a smooth changing curve? And when you're in rectangular uh, coordinates, your y value is a function of the x value. And um, what we did was we used the shape we know how to find area um, in, which is a rectangle. And you break up your region into a bunch of rectangles. And you would define each little base to be a change in an x value. And then the height of the function, ultimately, um, it's the output of the function at a particular x value. You sum up all those rectangles, and in the limit of the number of rectangles, ultimately, you have that form, the definite integral from A to B. So re the key thing is that a rectangle was the fundamental shape. In polar, that's not going to work, okay? because the polar functions are completely determined, or they're defined in relation to the origin, and they, they make a lot of symmetrical graphs around the origin. And so the shape, a rectangle is not going to work. So in polar coordinates, you need a different shape whose area you know, and you break up these polar curves into a bunch of different uh, shapes. In this case, we're going to use what's called a uh, uh, sector, okay, the area of a se sector. So we'll go motivate that um, and derive it down here below. But the idea is you're not going to use a rectangle. You're going to use a, the sector of a circle. You break it up. You add up... Um, all those shapes and you get you get what you want so just a quick quick derivation remember at some point in your math career you should have learned that if you want the area of the sector here let's call it a you can use a proportion here so in a circle the central angle is to the number of radians in the circle that ratio should equal the uh, area of the sector we want divided by the area of the entire circle and a little canceling and rearranging gives you that the area is theta over 2 r squared or 1 half r squared theta. So that's how you find the area of a sector. And so if we return up here, again, I'm breaking up this polar curve, looks like a rose petal, into a bunch of different sectors. Notice sometimes you're overestimating Sometimes you're underestimating. It's a similar idea. That's the calculus way, right? You break it up into a bunch of shapes. So in the limit, right, so each each little sector is going to have a, um, uh, a specific radius. We call that a little change in, in theta. And the actual area of this particular sector would be a change in the area. We apply our sector formula. The area is about equal to all of those added up. And then in the limit, you get this. So this is the fundamental and I know that was really quick, but this is really the fundamental um, formula we need to know. Okay, so that's why it's going to be here. It's highlighted. We're going to need to apply it. And mainly it's going to require us to use calculator skills. All right, so let's jump into an example. Okay, this is from Delta Math. It says, let R be the region bounded by half of one petal of the rose curve. R equals 3 cosine 4 theta, as shown in the diagram. Find the area of the region using a calculator round to the nearest thousandth. So the first thing to notice is the formula is not anything you need to think about, right? So our area equals, um, I'm going to put the one half on the outside, it's typically done. One half and um, r squared, in our case r is this, so you just square that. 3 cosine of 4 theta squared d theta. So that's not hard. What's uh, going to require the most work, I think, would be the, the limits of integration. In other words, the angles that belong here and here. 
Okay, and sometimes they're obvious, but sometimes they're not. So we need a strategy for finding those. And we want to make sure that when we're using our calculator, we make sure that we um, we store values, etc., to make sure that our errors don't um, accumulate. So if you look here, um, you know, it seems pretty clear that our lower limit of integration is going to be 0. I'll call this theta 1 equals 0. And then this curve gets traced um, as theta progresses from 0 to, let's just say, 90 degrees for now. As, as angles rotate positively, area is going to be swept out into this region. And so what we really need to know is what that second angle is. It looks like it's about here. Okay, let's just call this theta 2. We don't know what that is. And that is what we need to go find so that we can put in our limits of integration and compute. If you want a more dynamic look at this, let me just move on over here into a nice Desmos slider. So what, what we can see here is as I, right, so there's angle um, uh, when theta is 0. And as I progress, right, just imagine that being area that's getting collected. Basically, that half of a rose petal gets traced between 0 and whatever that angle is where the purple dot's at the pole. So that's the second angle we need. Okay, so the strategy for doing this, and this is kind of the main takeaway, the strategy is we're not going to be in polar ever. Okay, don't ever be in polar if you're taking the BC Calc exam. It does not have any functionality that we need. Okay, so the strategy, so um, need limits of integration. Okay, and then the strategy is going to be to graph this function in polar, I mean in Cartesian. Graph polar function in rectangular form. Okay, this is a sinusoid and it's going to make a nice wave function that we'll analyze. Okay, so that will be the strategy. So what do I mean by that? I mean go into your calculator in function uh, in your um, standard Cartesian mode okay y1 I put in 3 cosine of 4x for our window your x min is 0 your x max so I chose pi over 4 because if you look if you look at this diagram it seems pretty obvious that this pedal is going to get traced and the angle at which the curve comes back to the pole is well before well, it's definitely before 90 degrees, and it looks well before 45 degrees, which is like right here, right? So you're not going to need to look. You're not going to need to look beyond pi over 4. And then my y min and y max are going to be negative, just to need to accommodate my amplitude here, right? So y min, y max just need to have negative 3 and 3 involved. Okay, I'm relying on a lot of your prior knowledge of graphing sinusoids. Okay, so that's there's my window. I hit graph. Let me clear that as though I didn't do that. So there, there's the window, uh, the curve you should be seeing. And what we want is we want this x-intercept, right? Because an x-intercept in Cartesian form represents a moment at which the polar curve is back at the pole or the origin. And we need the first time that happens because that angle is the upper limit of integration. So we hit second and then we trace. We want to calculate the zero. Sorry, this add is because I have the free version. Okay, so we go left bound, enter, right bound, enter. Okay, so it looks like 0.3927. Okay, now if you have a handheld TI 83 or 84, when you go back to this blank screen, if you just hit X, it should have stored that value. It does. I guess it did it for me too. Um, it stores that value, okay? Last time it didn't do it. I'm surprised it did it here. Um, as, as X, the most recent thing we computed. I am going to store that as a different letter, B. And now I'm going to uh, just integrate. So using my formula, 1 half R squared D theta. 
I know that this is now my upper limit of integration. So I hit math, I go up, okay? Um, and you can even put the 0.5 in front. I like to do that often. We're integrating from zero, and then we've stored the value b. And now it's r squared. So you can type the function in again, but I've already stored it into y1, right? So I can actually just go to variables function. This is a little cleaner. Just don't forget to square it. I think a lot of students forget to do that. And we're getting 0.883567, etc. So the college board lets you run that to either 0.883 or 0.884. If you're doing a delta math example, it's probably going to ask you to round it to 0.884. All right, so we write it down and we are done. So this is the integral from 0 to, um, I'll put b here, and I should have just kind of give you a sense of um, what we graphed, right? The Cartesian form here, r is up here, theta is here. The curve we looked at looks like this. Okay, it looks like it just kind of goes from 3 to negative 3 crossing somewhere. So a decent sketch is good enough. And we got that that was about point, uh, just gonna take, take a quick look again, what was that? It was um, 0 0.3865656, I'm just gonna write that. That are what the point is you're storing that as b, and then we're integrating from zero to b, and we write down that our answer is about zero point eight eight three or zero point eight eight four. This is probably what delta math would accept, but either of these are fine on the exam. Okay, so the point of this formula was to quickly derive this. Um, Sorry, the, the point of this video was to quickly derive this formula for you. Okay, that the der derivation is not really that important, but it's just important to maybe uh, understand where things come from. But really, it's uh, applying the formula and, I, and figuring out the limits of integration.